Hello and welcome to this session, Summer Streets of Malmö with Ellen Ingvist, Traffic Planner for the City of Malmö. This is a session for the Global Walkability Correspondence Network, GWCN. We are an international collective of professionals and advocates supporting walkability for sustainable cities. And today we are really excited to be hosting Erin, who has also recently joined our network, is also with um, the uh, Swedish Pedestrian Association Foot. Uh, Erin lives outside Malmö, but originally hails from Karlskrona. She has worked at the city of Malmö for a little over 10 years now and previously worked at the Swedish Transport Administration. She works as a traffic planner with both new developments and existing urban environments. She is particularly passionate about pedestrians and cyclists and also sits on the board of the Swedish Pedestrian Association Foot. With regard to the Summer Streets program, Elin notes, we have been working on the Summer Streets since 2017 and I have been involved since the beginning. We started with one street, but the project has now grown to five streets and a square. It's a popular project, even if it raises a lot of emotions when you reduce the accessibility of car traffic. And I will be turning it over to Ellen, who has a presentation prepared for us, and we'll follow up with Q&A. And I just want to say I was introduced to Summer Streets uh, on foot, walking through Malmö, and I absolutely adore them. It's exciting, really exciting to hear about the program growing. I think it's going to be really interesting to be able to publish this video in other cities, uh, other people, but also cities, be able to take note how you've done this. So I want to say thank you very much and looking forward to your presentation. Thank you uh, for the introduction. And I am also really looking forward to tell you more about the summer streets in Malmö. Uh, I'll start my uh, presentation. Uh, so does everyone see it now or? Yeah, okay. Uh, for those who hasn't been to Malmö, uh, I could tell you that it is the third biggest uh, city in uh, Sweden, with about 350,000 inhabitants. Malmö is known to be a bicycle-friendly city. Um, it's flat and quite dense, uh, and there are uh, rarely any snow, uh, which improve the conditions for bicyclists and also, of course, for pedestrians. Although we have taken action to improve walkability in Malmö, I think there is room for improvements. Uh, and we have still some way to go before walking has the same status as cycling in Malmö. Uh, however, I'm going to tell you about this project, Summer Street, uh, which objectives are to improve walkability and urban life. Uh, for eight years ago, we got a political assignment, uh, which gave us the task of exploring how Friskatan, uh, on the picture you see Friskatan, could be developed uh, to be a more greener and more inviting street for pedestrians. Uh, at that time, Friskatan was quite a traditional street. Uh, uh, pavements, car parks, and a lot of asphalt, uh, not a tree in sight. Uh, so a lot of space was dedicated to cars and not that much to pedestrians and trees and so on. Uh, however, uh, this garden uh, is an uh, important street, especially for bicyclists and uh, and uh, pedestrians. In one end, we have uh, Triangen. Uh, it's a shopping mall and a train station. And on the other side, we have Folkets Park, which is a, a big park in Malmö, with a lot of activities for the entire family. <clears throat> and along the streets, we have shops, restaurants, and uh, cultural uh, institutions. Um, in 2016, before the summer streets, uh, there were about 8,000 um, pedestrians per day uh, along the streets, 4,000 bicyclists and about 
2,000 car travels. So quite a lot of pedestrians and not that much car traffic. Uh, the project started with a dialogue with the people on Friesgatan about how they would like uh, the street to look and function. Those who visited the street uh, had the chance to share their thoughts and dreams for Friesgatan. We encourage people to, to write their thoughts on uh, how they would like uh, Friesgatan to function. Um, on this sign, you can see uh, it says, uh, where you make room for people, they come. And uh, I think it catches the essence of the entire project. So. Uh, under our slogan, Fri on Free Skarten, uh, the street was closed off for a week. Um, and it soon became quite clear for us that there was a longing for a greener, uh, calmer and safer street space. And based on this idea, uh, the first summer street uh, of Malmö was born. And the year after that, two, 2017, uh, the test was implemented. Uh, the summer street was implemented together with the restaurants and shops along the street. Uh, when there were less car traffic, the outdoor restaurants could take more place. Um, about uh, all car parks along the street was removed, about 30 of them. The street was regulated as a pedestrian street, uh, which means that uh, deliveries, dust, cars, and so on, are allowed to drive on the street, but you are not allowed to dr just drive through. Uh, you are allowed to bike on the street, but you have to adjust your speed to pedestrian speed. Yeah, and the summer streets, I, I should tell you, the summer street lasts from April 1st to the end of October. Uh, after the first year, we did an evaluation. Um, there was a si significant reduction of the car traffic, but at the beginning uh, of the test, there were a lot of complaints about the car traffic that drove here illegally, mainly from the residents on the street. Uh, there were even some articles in the newspapers. Uh, to reduce the car traffic, uh, we put up information signs and we had collaboration with the police. Uh, they made more controls on the street and all our efforts um, resulted in reduced car traffic. Uh, there were hardly any complaints about the, the removal of the car parts, which is quite interesting because that was one of our main concerns from the politicians before we started the test. Uh, we did a large survey among the residents and the visitors and the uh, restaurant owners. Uh, and more than nine out of 10 wanted it, wanted Friesgarten to continue to be a pedestrian street. Uh, this evaluation has been very helpful and a great support to our work. <clears throat> and it's also helped us uh, to get a political decision that Friesgarten should continue to be a summer street for three more years. And we should, uh, and also to develop the project to uh, more streets. <clears throat> uh, ever since Friesgarten, has uh, continued to be a summer street and the project has also grown to, to other locations in the city. Uh, today we have uh, four summer streets and one summer street uh, that has paused uh, for this year and also uh, one square uh, Seabeds plan. Uh, 
uh, one of our main goals is to create greener streets. Uh, so a large uh, part of our budget is spent on trees and plantings. Um, and we buy quite large trees that can live on for several years. So uh, these uh, plantings are also used to reduce the speed of the car traffic uh, by narrowing the street and, um, and force them to change sides. Another important element of the summer streets are the seatings. Uh, there should be seatings for everyone and be available in different form. Uh, on several of the streets, we have these wooden decks uh, that serves as seating and hanging furniture, but also as stages for events and activities. It became clear quite early on how important that this type of change comes from below and that there need to be a desire for change from those who live, stay and work in the city. Therefore, ever since, we have worked on the basis that the initiative for the summer street should come from those uh, who, uh, from the association, businesses, property owners and residents on the street. Uh, to assess a uh, street's potential as a summer street, we have drawn up several criteria. And one of the most important criteria is that there must already be a large flow of pedestrians and people in the area. This is simply because uh, it is the people who make a place like this and there need to be elements uh, that make the place populated. So what happens with all the space that we created when we uh, remove the car tra traffic? Uh, this is one example. Uh, it is a yoga day. Um, so the yoga studio on Friskatan has moved its class out on the street. Um, and here we as a municipality need to be uh, quick-witted and solution-oriented to take advantage uh, of the commitment that already exists. This is another summer street called Klasgatan. Uh, on Klasgatan, we work closely with property owners and operators where we are responsible for the design and they are responsible for the activation of the street space. Uh, having this collaboration has been a success factor because they want to continue uh, developing this site year after year together with us. Klasgatan is also an example of how a dangerous thoroughfare has been transformed into a place full of activity and life. Uh, here we have closed off the midsection of the street uh, with uh, physical obstacles. Uh, and this has been uh, permanent after a couple of years and through the whole year. So even in winter, it's closed off. So now we're back where we started on Friskatan. Um, being able to test new designs and function on a one-to-one -one scale, <clears throat> scale is a fantastic opportunity to use Summer Street and Squares as a planning tool. As a result, the next year, uh, Friskatan will be transformed into a permanent pedestrian street. Uh, the, um, the street... Um, <laughs> the permanent design will incorporate all the lessons learned from the summer street. Uh, the street will have several large trees and sitting area and perennial, perennial plantings and areas for, act, for public life. Temporary trees are fine, but we would rather plant uh, trees in the ground so that they can grow and become big.
So uh, finally, some uh, conclusions that we made after these years. Uh, changing habits can be difficult and take time. Uh, and our experience is that the first year of a summer street can be quite messy. Uh, but we also learned that if you give it time, people soon will take over. Uh, and the number uh, and the number of cars become less and less. To give a street this time to really settle in, they are generally implemented for a period of three years at a time. Uh, and after this three years, three years period, we make a, a, a evaluation uh, to see how it works. As I said earlier, uh, dialogue with those who live, work and visit the street is very important. And uh, the dialogue is also a key to create a local interested, interest, interest in the street. So, thank you all. Uh, that's my in presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For Thank you. Thank you, Aline. Thank. Hey, fantastic. Thank you. So we'll open up for Q and A now. And um, but but you can tell me pronounce your name. But that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Elin, I'm I'm wondering, and thank you very much for the presentation. It was very interesting. I, I'm I'm wondering how did it change the habits of the people living in in these summer streets? So, for example, you mentioned that at the beginning they were driving into these streets, and uh, for example, what did they do with their cars, and how did their perception change about the summer street over time? I'm really wondering what was the you know effect on on those people yeah. impacted. Um, as I said, as, there are uh, car parks um, in uh, the streets nearby, so there are never any problems to remove the car parks. Uh, uh, quite often, we, as I said, uh, the uh, complaints we got is that they drove too much on the streets. Um, so we don't have any complaints that uh, you're not allowed to drive. Uh, and uh, um, the, the people take over the street uh, quite easily, actually. And now that we have five streets, uh, the uh, people in Malmö recognize uh, the street and know what to do. <laughs> um, um we have uh, we have a lot of bicyclists in Malmö and uh, there can be conflicts between the pedestrian and bicyclists. I think that's the main issue right now, not so much the car traffic actually. Um, but there are a lot of people that uh, sit uh, and uh, you know have picnics and uh, read a book and it's so yeah uh, it's quite nice to see <laughs> yeah i can imagine thank you thank you yeah, yes uh, i had a question for you um well, you you stated that you have any resistance or what part of this do you have any resistance to any kind of I'm sorry, I don't, I don't hear you that well. <laughs> Danny, it's a little muffled. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll say, uh, yeah. Uh, can you hear me correctly? Perhaps. <laughs> I'll have the question. 
Okay. It's noisy here. I think he's not typed the question. Yeah. Okay, while Vanny is typing his question, Elaine Lundmark has her hand raised. Hi, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. And um, I have two questions. So you talked a bit about the conflicts that you can uh, see between cyclists and pedestrians. Yeah. Then how are you working with these questions? Um, so that's the first one. And the second one is I know that there are several cities in Sweden that has summer streets. And I was just wondering, uh, I've seen some in Stockholm, and I was wondering, have, are you working with them or no? Are there some differences or are it, is it a bit the same, uh, the same concept? Uh, okay, I, I start with the bicyclist. Uh, that's the tricky question, I think. And I don't have a, a great solution yet. Um, we have put up information signs uh, that uh, tells everyone that they should uh, adjust the speed to uh, pedestrian space, but uh, it's yeah, yeah, it's difficult <laughs> actually. So now, if you have any answers or helps, I, I I'm glad to. <laughs> uh, yeah, now. Uh, Sorry, uh, we're still working on that one now. Uh, and yes, uh, we have a network with uh, Stockholm and uh, Gothenburg. Um, and um, I think there's a difference. Uh, if you um, uh, compare Stockholm with Malmö, uh, they, their project is on a much larger scale. I think they have about 23 different uh, summer streets. Uh, and we don't have that uh, kind of um, uh, project. Uh, and I guess we work a little bit more to um, adjust the project to every street uh, um, and try to make it, uh, yeah suitable for that location. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Thank you very much. And also, I've been living in Malmö and I can say that Friskatan is uh, amazing. So I totally agree. Thank you. It's a super project. Thank you. So Vanny has uh, typed his question. So Aileen Vanny in Cincinnati, Ohio asks, what part of the process have uh, has he encountered resistance from the residents? Correct, Danny? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I um, as I said, it's mostly about um, about the speed and the number of cars that drive on the streets. Uh, they. Uh, they want to think that uh, it's um, free to to play on the street, but uh, so, so it, sometimes it's uh, a little bit of conflict um, there. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, hardly anyone complains about the removal of the car park. So uh, that's uh, yeah, that's. Uh, interesting I think yeah. okay we have Mario then Geert and then Mohammed I will deliver your questions if you're not able to talk so Mario Mario hey Lee thank you very much with beautiful pictures uh, yeah it was very very nice um uh, one one thing I would like to ask is uh, usually um the success is it's easier when there is terraces from shopkeepers oh. or restaurants or cafes and that sometimes there's a problem with noise at night as well um i don't know if that's a problem uh did you your summer streets usually have terraces um, and that makes it easier? yes uh there's a mix of terraces um but i think all our summer streets 
as some kind of outdoor restaurants. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, it's difficult to to create a functioning summer street without uh, this life. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. It's uh, yeah. So uh, I agree. Yeah. And yeah, the, uh, the problem with noise sometimes. The noise can be noise, a problem, yeah. but not yeah. all. But we haven't Thank had you, any complaints about the noise, actually. But I know uh, there are struggling in Gothenburg uh, with this. But we don't have um, have had that many complaints about the noise, actually. Sometimes I think the, the restaurant's speaks. closes at uh, 10 p.m. PM uh, in this street, so it's not that big issue. Yeah, but it's, it's uh, yeah, the bars, I think it's usually the problem. And I usually say it's, they are vic the streets are victim of the success <laughs> because mm. suddenly they are very crowded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the pro the conflict between cyclists and pedestrians is something that really, I, I, I suspect is going to be a problem yeah. uh, that will be more and more serious in the future when there will be more cyclists and more pedestrians that we hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, maybe we start uh, thinking about traffic calming for cyclists. Uh, the yeah. Netherlands, yeah, the Netherlands have a lot of traffic calming for cyclists. Yes. But yeah, yeah, we don't have a, there is no solution immediate. No, no, <laughs> I don't have any yet. <laughs> but uh, it's difficult because we also want to encourage uh, cycling. So uh, it's a conflict <laughs> with, uh, within ourselves, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kurt. Uh, hello, Taksamuk uh, Eileen. Um, very interesting. I had a comment and a question, but Mario basically took my question already, so I'll, I'll turn it into two comments. Uh, first of all, with respect to this conflict with cyclists and pedestrians in Brussels, where I live, we had a similar situation with the, the main pedestrian street. Um, and that, to a large extent, improved at the moment that police started giving fines to the pedestrians, uh, to, the, to the cyclists, uh, when they went too fast. I mean, they are allowed to go there six or eight kilometers an hour. I'm not sure anymore. Um, but And I don't think they don't give many fines for the moment, but people believe that they give fines. And that's the most important thing. I mean, that's basically education by enforcement uh, you need to do. So, I mean, it could well be that every now and then a little police action and much press around it uh, can can do quite a lot of uh, things. And I, I think that that uh, is valid for, for a number of cities like that. Uh, with respect to the discussion on the terraces, that was also my question from is there not too much noise, but I recall when I lived in street, in Norway, in, in Stockholm, that indeed the, the, the cafes closed at 10 o'clock or something like that. And that is a very important part. I know that uh, also, also in the bar, I mean, if we were outside with the beer, we were allowed to drink our beer further inside, but not outside with in respect to the... Uh, the people living there. And I think there are very few places that have that. And I think Sweden is a bit special in that. And I think that's also something that can be recommended for many other cities. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Mohammed, you have, um, Mohammed, are you able to use audio? Do you want to ask your two questions? Uh, uh, do you have my voice? Yeah. Oh, great. It's great. Okay, I, I asked my question and thanks for the presentation. Um, first of all, uh, I've been reading a, an article and it was about psychopaths. And the businesses around that psychopath says that they are, their profit may, you know, their profit may, may be harsh for them to gain profit or don't, I don't know, maybe for a customers find a parking spot, something like that. So the question is that, do businesses and retail stores resist for the summer streets in that area? I don't know, maybe. The, the, could you repeat the question? The businesses, the businesses or retail yeah, stores. Yeah. 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 Are they doing their resist or they're just accepting it? No, no. <laughs> it's, uh, 
the major concerns from the the shop uh, yes the shops are actually um that you can't park the car outside the shop so yeah uh, it's uh, uh, and and also that uh, uh, we have had to change our, our uh, furnishing of the street um at the first year we had a lot of uh, plantings and so on uh, outside uh, the shops and we have to move it to the other side so that we don't push people away from the uh, shopping windows and so on. So it's a lot to think about when you uh, furnish the streets with the plantings and seatings and so on. So yeah, um, the shops are perhaps the most difficult to, uh, to work with, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the second question is that, are they temporary, the summer sea? Is it temporary or is yeah. that? Temporary, okay. Yes, from the April 1st to the last of October, yes. So okay. in the winter, it's uh, back to a normal street. Okay. So uh, the last thing, uh, I couldn't understand the evaluation part in your presentation. So uh, if you have time, would you mind uh, represent that part of your presentation? Okay, yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. You... Mm -mm -mm. This side? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I was just... Uh, telling you that we made a survey uh, amongst the residents and the, the shop owners and the restaurant owners and the, the real estate. Uh, um, and uh, we asked a lot of questions, but the, the um, 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 but I just said that nine out of 10 wanted uh, it to be a pedestrian street uh wanted this garden to continue to be a pedestrian street so it um yeah was it mm, i don't remember what did i say <laughs> um yeah and we we um um uh, we noticed a significant reduction of the car traffic, uh, but we had some tr troubles uh, in the beginning of the test. Uh, so we had to um, put up extra uh, information signs. Uh, and we also had a collaboration with the police. Uh, mm -hmm. I have another question. May I mm -hmm. ask? Okay. So you think that nine out of ten uh, of people says that they want pedestrian street. Uh, yeah. The question is that these nine people are uh, were they from that area? I mean, uh, were they residents, shoppers? I don't know, businesses. Uh, I think it was uh, about the same. Both. Mm -hmm. uh, we had three different surveys, and I think uh, all three showed that uh, about nine out of 10 wanted it to continue to be a pedestrian street. So also the restaurants and shops, uh, actually. Thank you. Hmm? Okay, so Nali, I see you've had your hand raised, but Raluca dropped uh, a question in a little while ago, Raluca. Uh, hi, can I ask the question here or should I type it out? Oh, one moment. So I so Raluca, um we'll go Raluca because she she dropped in the question about eight minutes ago. Okay. And then we'll just go to Sonali. One moment. Thank you. I could have left Sonali first. This is no problem. I hope it's not to know me. So I asked if um first I congratulated on the congratulated you on the project. Really uh, cool, and I know public street changed. 
Uh, and my question is that if all the summer streets are created exclusively in the city center, or are they, uh, or do people ask and want them in other residential areas? Um, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, four out of five is in the city center. Uh, the fifth is in uh, a part of Malmö that's called Limhamn, and it's uh, a smaller uh, center. So it's not in, yeah. So it's got its own uh, shops and, uh, uh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's a small city center, but uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's difficult to uh, to create some streets uh, in the uh, in just a resident area. Um, you have to have some elements that uh, uh, make people to come. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we. Yeah. Hi, Aileen. It was a really good presentation. Uh, I just have one question to ask. Uh, basically, since this uh, uh, strip of the road has been reclaimed only for people on a temporary basis, what, uh, are there any alternative routes that are provided to navigate the traffic on some different road? And was there a general access uh, accept, acceptability from the people uh, maybe car owners of public transport to use that alternative route. Uh, sorry, I, I don't hear it. Uh, could you repeat? Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Um, yeah, so it. It is a really good presentation and uh, the way that you have reclaimed uh, the streets and the side room for pe uh, for pedestrians, it's really good to know that it's working out as a summer street, uh, although on a temporary basis. Was there any alternative road to divert the traffic effectively without creating a congestion? And was there a general acceptability among people to use that alternative roads that were, uh, you know, uh, for them yeah mm -hmm. um yes there is alternate roads uh we don't have some streets where there are uh, a main road um it's often local uh, streets so um and uh, it's uh yeah many uh, alternative uh, streets yeah and we don't have uh, public transport or, or anything like that on the streets. It's, um, um, yeah. So it's just a uh, local street, yeah. Okay, and when the car owners were uh, comfortable or was that like they were uh, fine with taking the alternate roads and there was no, uh, I mean, uh, no problems in terms of, uh, no. you know, uh, taking your no no, no, no problems and I, I think it takes a little bit time for them to to get used to the change but uh, after a couple of uh, weeks uh, they learn uh, how to drive so it hasn't been that uh, that that's much really problems great. now that's really great yeah thank you thank you Okay, so we're coming up on the last 15 minutes or so. So everybody get your final questions prepared. And I do have a question as well. I, I think in your presentation, you mentioned that the aim is greener streets and that a large part of the budget is spent on trees and planting. And I would just love to hear in general more about that, more about um, if there's any obstacles or uh, any, f what what is the bigger vision with the greener streets and um you know, any practical elements related to, uh, was it a, was it kind of a fight to get a budget increase for, for trees? Um, yeah. Uh, all, yeah. 
actually trees is a, a very important issue now in um, in Malmo and uh, the politicians uh, they want to plant trees everywhere so it's uh, fantastic I think uh, so it hasn't been any problem to to get a budget for that um, it's um, some practical issues uh, because it's a temporary street we need to store the trees somewhere uh, and it's uh, large uh, um, trees and um, pots yeah. so uh, that's the, the the tricky thing uh, you have to find a place to store all the trees mm, and sometimes we just uh, push them together and let them uh, stay in the streets even during the the winter actually so yeah one one more connect, uh, question connected to that that's really exciting um and also that the politicians understand it so there's no um sort of political divide on it so if you can uh as somebody who works for a municipality where there is sort of across the board understanding of the importance of trees and greening could you share any insight uh, for people listening, maybe who are advocating for, uh, maybe advocating desperately for more greening in their cities or for other municipal people in other cities where it is a struggle. Yeah, I actually don't know what happened because it's uh, just in the the past years that it turned and um, and I think it's about the I'm not sure about the climate change and the um, um, microclimate on the streets. Uh, they have actually understand the importance of trees. And we uh, work with something called 33300. I think uh, you, you've heard about it. And it's, um, yeah, it's kind of catchy and, and it sticks. So I, I think. Um, they understand more of it and um, yeah we had there are a lot of examples from other cities in uh, all of, over the world um, that uh, have uh, uh, a lot of uh, temporary trees and so on and uh, so uh, our politicians have uh, heard about this and uh, they are really excited about it. So, yes, now I, I don't have any tip, but <laughs> uh, share a different uh, experience from uh, other places in the world, I guess. Also, Geert, do you want to ask your question about that you dropped in the chat? Mm. Sure, sure. I just had a quick question from, uh, I mean, Summer Street, normally I understand something like a few weeks or something like that. It, I think it's fantastic that you have them six months. Are there any plans to just have them the whole year? Um, yeah, no, it's, um, uh, we have rules for the outdoor restaurants uh, in the same time period, uh, and then they have to close. So I think it's there's meaning to to uh, have at the same time as uh, these uh, restaurants, and also Malmo is quite grey and boring in December and January. I think there's not the, the same need. Um, however, as I told you, Fiskatten is is a, is going to rebuild into a permanent street and then it's all year round so yeah you can think about it but uh, we start with something and then <laughs> move on yeah okay mario's got a question and mohammed okay we're on the last 10 minutes so yes okay i'll make it quick um so the, the idea is great some is it but uh, in regional scale, can we implement summer series for for countries that they are having scorching hot sunny days during the summer? 
Evet, it is sunny days. Yeah, for countries like you know, uh, in in summer we have really hot sunny days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I of have. Course. We can yes. plant it. Okay. The conditions are quite different uh, in uh, uh, other countries, of course. So some streets works in Malmo, but perhaps not uh, in different countries. Yeah, I I, I think that it's it might be you know hard to plant something like summer street in in Isfahan because as I mentioned we have scorching at sunny days and people are really into parks and green areas and we want to plant trees we have to think about the next 10 years in the future to see yeah. the advantages <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. thank you okay Mario I think uh, many of us were thinking, we want your politicians. <laughs> and we want your your public opinion as well. Um, mm. Yes, uh, one thing that was interesting, I was talking yesterday with a friend, um, for people that don't have such friendly politicians to these ideas, is if you do the evaluation and then you show them the evaluation. Yeah. Because you can ask them, how... Um, what is the percentage of people that want this road to become pedestrian? And then what I did before is I I, I didn't show the graphic. I just covered it uh, with, in my PowerPoint presentation. And I asked, what is the percentage uh, of people that want the street to become pedestrian? And uh, what... Um, uh, uh, if they want a car-free day once a week or once a month or once a year. And I asked them, what is the percentage, their perception of their own voters? And they all get it wrong, usually. Because <laughs> <laughs> the people want more than they yeah. say. Yes. And that's a very shocking uh, realization for a politician. Yeah. I don't know if and you I, were... Yeah. I think it's easier to, uh, if we call it a test, and it's a temporary thing, uh, it's easier to <laughs> to get it through, um, and uh, and then when you it's already there and uh, it's so popular you can't remove it. It has to continue. So yeah, it's a trick. <laughs> now, just one thing. Coincidentally, we are trying to do the same in Lisbon in the summer, but during two weeks um, now in September. And yeah. I'm, I have to think about a questionnaire this weekend. So I'm going to give you my email. Yeah. If it is okay, you send me your Swedish questionnaire. <laughs> of course. And uh, Google is my friend and I can, I can try to understand. Yeah. Okay. Good? <laughs> of course. I'll do it. Okay. Balas. Yeah, um, I'm wondering, Galin, do you know what is the percentage of uh, car users, bikers, um, uh, public transport users uh, of uh, commuters in Malmö? Oh, great question. Uh, hmm, I think it's about, it's ma main travels. Uh, it's about, hmm, in the city centre, I think it's about, 30 bicyclists, 20 pedestrians. Um, see if I can uh, get it right. Um, uh, uh, we said 25, 25 uh, bicyclists and uh, public transport and um, 25 cars, mm, something like that. But it, it's in the city center, so. Mm -hmm. And um in in Friesgarten, for example, there are not many that owns their own car. So I think uh, that's also um, a factor. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Okay, we are coming to the end here. I want to do this very briefly because Eamon is also new to the network, the Global Walk the League Corresponds Network, and I think it's really fantastic. Uh, all the people that have showed up, I just want to briefly, um, I don't know if you've peeked at the chat, Eamon, but we have people here from Cincinnati, Ohio, Warsaw, Poland, Ishfahan, Iran, Atlanta, Georgia, USA, 
Timisoara, hope I said that right, Romania, Lisbon, Portugal, Brussels, Belgium, Mumbai, India, Paris, France, Stockholm, Sweden. Wonderful, Sped, for your first session. I think this was also so exciting because you bring the municipal perspective um, for a city that is very well known for sustainable sustainability initiatives. Um, and you're an advocate with a, a foot and um, yeah, now a network member. So this has been really wonderful. We welcome you to the network. Look forward to learning more um, from Malmo. Thank you. Very exciting to meet all of you.